Welcome to our latest video on the reactions of solutions of lead to compounds. This video is suitable for A-level students. By the end of this video lesson, you should be able to understand the reactions of lead to solutions with aqueous sodium hydroxide as well as with solutions containing Cl- and I- anions. You should also be able to write chemical and ionic equations to describe the reactions that take place. And finally, you should be able to explain why lead 2 hydroxide is classed as amphoteric and be able to write equations to show its reactions with both acid and alkali. Now, in this video, we're going to look at the reactions of aqueous lead 2 plus ions. And lead 2 compounds are ionic and nearly all are insoluble in water. The only exceptions to this would be lead 2 nitrate and lead 2 ethanoate which are soluble in cold water. Most other lead compounds are insoluble. Now solutions of these salts undergo precipitation reactions with a range of anions. Now remember a precipitation reaction is where two solutions are added together with the formation of an insoluble solid, the precipitate. Now for the exam you must be able to describe what happens when lead 2 plus ions react with aqueous sodium hydroxide aqueous chloride ions and aqueous iodide ions. Now in this video we're going to see three different experiments and we're going to record our results in the following table. So the first experiment is going to be in two parts. We're going to add a few drops of sodium hydroxide solution to a few drops of lead nitrate solution and we're going to see what color precipitate forms and then we're going to add excess sodium hydroxide and see if the precipitate dissolves. Now the purpose of part B is to see if the precipitate that we form in A is an amphoteric compound. Now in experiment 2 we're going to add a few drops of sodium chloride solution to a few drops of lead nitrate solution and we're going to write down the colour of the precipitate. And in part three, we're going to add a few drops of potassium iodide solution to a few drops of lead nitrate solution. And once again, record the color of the precipitate that forms. So let's carry out the first experiment. And in this first experiment, we're going to take a few drops of lead nitrate solution, which contains the PB2 plus ions. And we're going to put this into a test tube. And then we're going to add a little bit of sodium hydroxide solution and we get a white precipitate. And then if we add excess sodium hydroxide solution, this precipitate will start to dissolve. So we've just added excess sodium hydroxide here and already the precipitate is starting to dissolve. And if we give it a few shakes, we'll see that we form a colorless solution. So the observation here is that we form a white precipitate of lead to hydroxide and this precipitate will dissolve in excess sodium hydroxide solution. So now we've completed experiments 1a and 1b. We record the observations in our table. So a few drops of sodium hydroxide solution is added to a few drops of lead nitrate solution. The result is a white precipitate and this white precipitate is lead to hydroxide. And when we add excess sodium hydroxide, this precipitate, this lead to hydroxide solid, dissolves in excess aqueous NaOH to form a colorless solution. So now let's look at what our observations mean. Now, when a solution containing Pb2 plus ions react with aqueous sodium hydroxide, we form a white precipitate and this is called lead to hydroxide. Now we can write an ionic equation here to explain what has happened. So Pb2 plus ions react with two OH minus ions to form the white precipitate lead to hydroxide which is PbOH in brackets two and the state symbols are Aq aqueous for both reactants the Pb2 plus ions and the OH minus ions, and S for solid for the lead 2 hydroxide, which is an insoluble solid and is the precipitate here. Now in part B, 
we carried out a second experiment where we added excess aqueous sodium hydroxide to the lead to hydroxide, the white precipitate. And we found that the white precipitate dissolved to form a colorless solution. Now, the fact that this white precipitate dissolves tells us that lead to hydroxide is amphoteric. Now, an amphoteric substance is a substance that will react with both acids and bases. And lead to hydroxide is a metal hydroxide. So we know it reacts with acid to form a salt and water. So I've written an equation here to show this. PbOH in brackets 2 would react with sulfuric acid, H2SO4, to form lead to sulfate, PbSO4, and water. So the chemical equation here would be PbOH in brackets 2 plus H2SO4 forms PbSO4 plus 2H2O. Now the state symbols here would be S for lead to hydroxide, AQ for sulfuric acid, S for lead to sulfate, and L for water. Now the reason that lead to hydroxide is classed as amphoteric is because it will not only react with acids to form a salt and water, it also undergoes a reaction with sodium hydroxide. And we've seen this because we've taken our insoluble solid, our precipitate, and when we added excess sodium hydroxide, it formed a new compound which is soluble. And we can write the following equation to show the reaction that's taken place. PbOH in brackets 2 reacts with 2 NaOH to form Na2 Pb OH in brackets 4. And the state symbols here would be S for the lead 2 hydroxide, which is a white precipitate, AQ for the aqueous sodium hydroxide, and AQ for our new colorless solution, which is Na2PbOH in brackets 4. Now the fact that lead 2 hydroxide can react with both acid and alkali proves that it's an amphoteric compound. Now you may remember from our previous lesson on group 4 oxides that lead to oxide is also amphoteric. So now let's carry out our second experiment. So we're going to put a few drops of lead to nitrate into a test tube and then we're going to add a few drops of sodium chloride solution and when we do this, once again, we form a white precipitate. And this precipitate is lead to chloride. So now we'll record our observation in the table. So we added a few drops of a sodium chloride solution to a few drops of lead nitrate solution. And the result was the formation of a white precipitate. And this insoluble white solid is lead to chloride. Now you should be able to write word, chemical and ionic equations to describe the reaction that's just taken place. So the word equation would be lead to nitrate plus sodium chloride forms lead to chloride, which is an insoluble white solid and sodium nitrate. Now the chemical equation would be PbNO3 in brackets 2 plus 2NaCl forms PbCl2 plus 2NaNO3. And the state symbols would be AQ for both reactants because they're aqueous solutions, S for lead to chloride, which is a white precipitate and it's a solid, and AQ for sodium nitrate. Now you should remember from previous lessons that all nitrates are soluble and all sodium compounds are soluble, so NaNO3 would be a soluble salt. Now we must be able to write ionic equations as well. So the ionic equation for a precipitation reaction is simply to write down the ions that form the precipitate. So we would have Pb2 plus plus 2 
Cl minus ions form the precipitate, which is PbCl2. The state symbols would be Aq for both reactants and S for the precipitate. And remember, we only write the ions that form the precipitate because the other ions are just spectator ions. They don't take part in the main reaction. So now let's carry out our last experiment. So we're going to put a few drops of lead nitrate into a test tube and we're going to add a few drops of potassium iodide solution. And as soon as you add the potassium iodide solution to the lead nitrate, you form a bright yellow precipitate. Now the precipitate we formed here is lead 2 iodide. And lead 2 iodide has a characteristic bright yellow colour. Now, in previous topics, you would have come across adding silver nitrate to an iodide and found this produces a yellow precipitate. However, this is a pale yellow precipitate unlike the bright yellow colour that we get if we form lead iodide. So all we need to do now is record our observation in the table. So when we added a few drops of a potassium iodide solution to a few drops of lead 2 nitrate, we formed a bright yellow precipitate and this was lead 2 iodide. Now this reaction with potassium iodide solution is often used as a chemical test for Pb2 plus ions because the formation of a characteristic bright yellow precipitate would prove that you had Pb2 plus ions present. So once again you should be able to write word, chemical and ionic equations to describe the reaction that's just taken place. So the word equation would be lead to nitrate plus potassium iodide forms lead to iodide which is a bright yellow precipitate, and potassium nitrate. And the chemical equation would be PbNO3 in brackets 2 reacts with 2Ki to form PbI2 plus 2KNO3. The state symbols here would be Aq for both reactants, S for our precipitate of lead to iodide, and Aq for potassium nitrate. Now remember, all nitrates and all sodium and potassium salts are soluble, so that's why KNO3 is aqueous here. Now to write the ionic equation, we just simply write down the ions that react together to form the precipitate. All the other ions are spectator ions, so the ions would be Pb2+, and that would be aqueous, reacts with 2I-, minus, that would be aqueous as well, to form the bright yellow precipitate of lead to iodide, which would be PbI2, and that would be S for a solid. So now let's test your understanding of this with some practice questions. So here's the first practice question. Read through the question, pause the video, have a go at it, and then we'll go for the answers. So question one states that aqueous solutions of sodium hydroxide and potassium iodide are added to two test tubes containing lead 2 nitrate. And it says state what is observed in each case and give an ionic equation for the reaction with iodide ions. So with aqueous sodium hydroxide added dropwise and then in excess, you would form a white precipitate, one mark if you said that, which dissolves to form a colorless solution with excess sodium hydroxide one mark for that. And then for part two, the observation with aqueous iodide ions would be a bright yellow precipitate, one mark if you said that, and the ionic equation would be Pb2 plus plus 2I minus forms PbI2, and the state symbols would be Aq, Aq, and S for solid. So here's our final practice question. Once again, read through the question, pause the video, have a go at it, and then we'll go for the answers. So question two states that when aqueous chloride ions are added to an aqueous solution of lead to nitrate, a precipitate is formed, and part A says give the color of the precipitate, while the precipitate would have a white color. And then for part B, 
It says write an ionic equation for the reaction that occurs, including state symbols. So this equation would be Pb2+, plus, and it'd be aqueous, plus two Cl- minus ions, that would be aqueous as well, forms PbCl2, and that's a solid. So there's one mark for the colour of the precipitate, and one mark for the ionic equation, providing you had the correct state symbols as well. So that concludes this video lesson. So after watching this video, you should now understand the reactions have led to solutions with aqueous sodium hydroxide, as well as with solutions containing Cl- and I- anions. You should also be able to write chemical and ionic equations to describe the reactions that take place. And finally, you should be able to explain why lead 2 hydroxide is classed as amphoteric and be able to write equations to show its reactions with both acid and alkali. So that concludes this video lesson. So please check out our YouTube channel, Dr. Rowe Chemistry, which has lots of GCSE, AS and A-level videos, and our Twitter site, at Radichemistry.